Oops, let me just turn my light around. And if somebody can check it for us, you don't have your kids at home, do you? Uh, yeah, they're all upstairs. I've got the quietest kids. I think we're live. <gasps> we are live. <laughs> okay. okay, well, where are you, my dear? I'm here, I'm here. You're here, you're here. <laughs> Okay, well, hi everyone. We're live. We're doing this today a little different. So, oh, hi, I'm GNG with GNG's Kitchen. And on the other side of the pond, there's my beautiful friend. I'm Aslin Law. Sorry, always interrupting. I'm Aslin Law from linsfood.com. Wonderful. And what are we going to do today, Aslin? Well, I, we're both doing soups, aren't we? Yes, we are. We are. Now, your yeah. soup is a wonderful, intricate soup. And you're going to have to tell us a little bit more about it because I really don't know. And that will be fantastic. So while you're doing that, I want to make sure that everything is perfect here so, and we are good. Okay, go for it. Right. So I am making a Russian fish soup. It's called solyanka. Solyanka refers to basically soups and stews that have a salty and sour constitution. So it can be made fully vegetables, it can be made seafood, it can be made with meat as well. So I'm doing smoked fish solyanka. It's, it's a recipe I learned sometime in the 90s, around the time I read my first London marathon. And oh, wow. Because I was hanging around with a lot of Central Asians and Eastern European girls, and uh, we were training together. So this was taught to me by one of the mothers um, who was visiting, preparing us for the marathon. So it's, it's an absolutely delicious soup. I make it all, I used to make it all the time, but I was as I was telling Gianji, I haven't made this in about a year. I don't know why. So I'm looking forward to having this for dinner tonight. Fantastic. And on my side of the pond, where I am making a roasted cauliflower soup, which is a cauliflower is one of those vegetables that we love, plus it's in season right now. And is the only, I mean, my son actually adores cauliflower. This morning, he was going to school a little bit later. And to kind of shorten the time of the vi video, I actually roasted my cauliflower earlier with some um, oil into the my oven and I had to be careful because he sat there and started eating I'm like no 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 this is for me for later I'm sorry you know it's like you got to keep an eye on those kids so mine is a very simple French recipe what a, a very simple rest of bacon and onions and creams and milk with um, the roasted cauliflower with some cheese also then we're going to be putting on the blender so we're going to make it very nice and smooth so i think and it's it's very basic and classic very economical dish to prepare but also very easy to make as well and unfortunately we do make this well i love soup so i make soup quite often so this one we have made it a couple of weeks ago so we're back into the tour so we're ready so are we ready to start cooking Absolutely. I, I'm just, I'm just, which I forgot to do when I was introducing the soup. I'm just going to be sauteing some stuff, aromatics, vegetables. We're going to add some fish stock. We're going to add the two types of fish that I'm using, and then we'll let it cook away. Uh, originally, initially 10 minutes with the fish stock. And then once the fish goes in about three to five minutes, just waiting for the little pieces of fish to get cooked. So you go ahead, Yanji. So I am starting with my bacon. I cut my bacon a little bit smaller this morning so we'll go this a little bit faster so this recipe when you will read it it will start with roasting your cauliflower so you put a, 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 a cookie sheet i put some uh, aluminum foil took my cauliflower heads cut it on small floors as you can see right there oh this is nice a little close i like this this is the first time I do it. This, we do my live on this side of my kitchen. It's kind of funny. So here's a fort. I also put the core in it because the core is actually quite delicious to eat and why throw it away mm. use it. And then I put a little bit of olive oil, no salt, no pepper, because we got, you know, with the bacon, which will, it's already salty and with Parmesan cheese, this will be too much. So I left this on season just with olive oil. 20 minutes in the oven, turn it a couple of times, and this is it. So when you're home, while you're doing that part, you can start doing this, which is taking the bacon, I cut a little bit shorter, and crisping it up onto one of your 
soup pan. This is happens to be my little La Cruzelle soup pan, which I don't get to use much. And today I decided it was going to get a little oil on the kitchen. So I'm roast. I am going to crisp the bacon on and I'm going to take it out and use all the rendering to continue on with the rest of my recipe. So do you want to take over from here and see what cool. step you're doing? Cool. So one of the um, identifying um, ingredients in this soup in Solyanka is the use of salted cucumbers. Well, tell us go. more about it. I'm almost telling. almost like gherkins, but, but not quite. So they're essentially mini cucumbers that have been preserved in brine. That's it. Salted Russian cucumbers are extremely easy to make. So if you can't get hold of them, you if you have access to Eastern European, Central European shops, you should be able to find them. Um, otherwise, you know, go online. But if you do want to make them yourself, all you need is some mini cucumbers or if you can only get the, um, the large kind, you just cut them up into um, sort of, you could even slice them or cut them into sticks, sort of finger thickness sticks of cucumbers about that long, place them in a sterilized jar, top with brine, that's just salt solution, say about one cup of, the, the ratio is about one cup of water to about half a cup, quarter cup salt, and add some peppercorns, add a bay leaf, and if you happen to have blackberry bramble stuff around, pick a few leaves from black, your blackberry plants and dump that in there as well. So leave it, and it can be a refrigerator pickle, that's to make your, leave it in the fridge and use it within a month. So what we're going to do with this salted cucumbers is we're going to cut them up. All the, the filling in this soup is roughly the same size. So we're going to cut them up, dice them, so essentially into little cubes. So I've done the same thing with the onions and carrots here. Okay. Yep. So as I was explaining to Gianji just now, I made a note to myself, always do your onions before you put your eye makeup on. <laughs> Absolutely. So, That's what I did this morning early too. Before my I'm shower. Going, oh, no. Oh, no. My mascara. <laughs> So, and I've done the same with fish. So I've got salmon, simple salmon fillets, and then I've got smoked haddock. I couldn't find undyed smoked haddock today, or my son couldn't when I sent him out to the shops. And so we've got dyed smoked haddock. So you can use three different types of fish. One of them, if you're making the smoked fish solyanka, one of them has got to be smoked, and the other two can be just salmon and haddock salmon and cod or cod and had it, whatever you want to use. Yeah. So, so, and then on top of that, the ingredients, we've got olives, we've got capers. So the capers and the salted cucumbers form that salty and sour base of this soup itself. Wow. Don't forget to rinse your, your capers before you use them. Now, so I'm going to get cooking. A quick, question, a quick question for you. Do you yeah. use capers in brine or capel, capers in salt? Do you salted. Have a I prefer salted. I prefer salted capers, full of yeah. salt there, you see? I, I, I do too. I do too. And, and there is a difference. We may, we may want to say the difference why we choose it. I, because the salty one, that keeps it preserves them better than the vinegary, the, the, the brine, which makes them a little bit softer. Softer, but, they fall apart back quicker, you know, which you may not always want. So I've got the stove, um, I've got the saucepan on there. And another one of the um, um, tangy um, ingredient that we're using two more is lemon juice and white wine vinegar. So I happen to have this lemon infused olive oil. So I'm going to saute our aromatics, the onions and the carrots with the lemon infused olive oil, because why not? Why not, right? We have, we have a wonderful Christmas market about an hour away from, from here. So I went, I visited there for the first time. I've been in this part, in this part of the world for over a quarter of a century. And I went there for the first time. And that's where I got the lemon flavored olive oil. Now, do you do your own lemon infused olive oil? Because I do my garlic and my rosemary olive oil. I do, I do. And I, I don't blog this. I meant to do it this starting this year because, but then as you all know, I got COVID for six weeks. So, yeah. so everything's starting a bit late. But what, one of the things I do is I, I love to infuse vinegar. 
That's one of my favorite things. Olive oil, I do. Uh, I've got a chili, chili um, olive oil in the pantry at the moment, but it's it's the vinegars that I love doing. The vinegars are oh, interesting. See, I love the oils. For me, the oils are the what I love the most. Maybe because I do use a lot of oils, and I do the chili, I do the rosemary, I do the garlic, infused garlic, which is fabulous, and um, it's kind of nice. You know, when you use it, then they're there. But my advice, if you ever do those, just put them in, like, if you don't use them, put them in a darker cupboard, too. Because sometimes yeah. the garlic has tendency to, to brown out and just become a little better. So I'm sorry, we're getting sidetracked here. You can tell that we like cooking and we just constantly kind of go back to us. So. So, so I'm going to saute those onions and carrots, okay? Wonderful. Oh, I chose a small saucepan today. Let's hope I've got enough space. Well, I, I, mine is not cooking as fast today for some my reason. I, and I even cut the bacon a little smaller and I stopped playing with it. So I'm going to leave it alone for a couple of more minutes. The bacon is actually what we'll be using it for this recipe. It stores the end to crisp it up and put it on top of it. And we're using, instead of oil or butter, we're using the rendering of the bacon to give the flavor to the rest of the ingredient, which are very, very simple. I mean, there are just mm. a yellow onion, salt and pepper, some nutmegs, obviously the cauliflowers, and then we're gonna cook it with the um, chicken stock. We're gonna put it through the food processor. One is all done. We're gonna add the butter, milk, excuse me, milk, heavy cream, and Parmesan cheese. And I think those are almost done here. So, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them down. I'm going to try to see. I can't see much. Okay. Well. So we've got, we've got, where, where are you at, Jandy? I am roasting, uh, crisping my bacon, who is not crisping as fast as I want to, but it's getting there. It's getting there, so. Okay, I can I can get a whiff of my carrots and my onions. So now I'm going to continue with step two of the recipe, which Perfect. is which is adding the <coughs> pardon me the, cucum uh, the cucumbers, the salted cucumbers. So they're going in. So how long are they going to be cooking for? We're going to just stir this through and then add the fish stock. And I've got a bay leaf here, a fresh bay leaf. You can use dry bay leaf. It doesn't matter. And some peppercorns, maybe. Well, I do love my peppercorn in soup. Some peppercorns and a little bit of tomato puree, puree okay. or paste. Depends on where in the world you happen to live in. It's called different things. But not passata, okay? It's the concentrated tomato paste. So good. now we're just going to stir this through. That smells good already. I know, you, you know, I love the smell of bacon and I love the smell of onions when it's cooked. I think mine is already getting there. So I'm just gonna pull them out. Okay. Should be a couple of more minutes crisper, but that's okay. They are fine. Okay, so now I'm going to be adding the fish stock. So at this stage, after adding the fish stock, I'm just going to let it come to a boil. Okay. And, and then we're going to leave it to simmer. Perfect. For and about I'm gonna, 10 I'm minutes. Sorry. It's all right, don't worry. And I'm going to add my onions into mine. Now that all the uh, bacon has been removed, I'm going to add my onions to it. I'm going to let them soften for a few minutes, which is going to really take a few minutes because I caught them very small today. Alrighty, and then as soon as those toughness up a little bit, I am going to add the, the broth, the uh, roasted cauliflower. Now, if you time it perfectly, you will you can just at this step, once you're putting this in, you can put take the roasting cauliflower off of your oven and put them directly in here and it will be fine. You don't have to let them cool off you know, it will save you literally probably a couple of minutes and as I was kind of cooking as you go along here. Okay, those are nicely soft. I love to cut them small. I'm gonna add my roasted cauliflower to it. Okay. 
And so we, we, we had a storm here today in the UK. And in, in, in the southern part, it was uh, we were all on red alert. Schools, universities, they were all shut today. They were really. And, and it was it was it was interesting. It was interesting. Uh, uh, when it kind of started, one of our bins sort of toppled over, but, you know, it flopped open and the leftover bin bag that was there, because they don't oh always goodness. empty the bin bag, went flying <laughs> to our neighbors oh, no. across no, no, the road. No. So my son, because we're so conscientious, you know, so oh, yeah. my son went running after the bin bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sorry about it. my little monster. All right. <laughs> Let me... You know, it's funny because we only had one day of rain here and it rained so bad, so bad that all the roads were closed, right? So the school gave us a call and say, hey, no school today. So we call it a rain day. We have the sun 360 days out of the year. We have monsoon in the summertime, right? So it never really rains. So now every time, well, during that period, every time it rained, the kids, all the children said, could you just call the school to make sure that we have a rain day today? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Yeah. While, we were, while we were talking, I put in my uh, chicken stock, uh, salt and pepper, and a little bit of fresh uh, thyme that I have in my backyard. And then I, I am going to put some nutmeg to it. I have some fresh nutmeg that I'm going to... There you go. Perfect. I am so sorry about my little monster. He is a monster I adore. But if anybody wants a little Westie, his name is Fergus, and he's ready for adoption. <laughs> Because <laughs> mom sometimes has a hard time with him. All righty. So this is going to be cooking for a few minutes, you know, 15 or so minutes. But my roasted cauliflower were nice and soft. And I am going to leave them alone. Okay. Now, one great thing about this soup, you can cook it up to this point and then leave it alone and put it in the refrigerator and bring it back the day after. So if you're short in times and you have dinner, but you have some times available the night before, preparing the soup is excellent to this point right now. Then I have it here. You can even put it on the blender if you wish to and have it then. But if you want to just leave it as it is, that's fantastic. So the next step, it will be an even easier step to do. That's always, that's always handy, being able to make a certain part of it ahead. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm, I am a, a, a the day cooking, but sometimes it's nice. Many when you have gatherings and party, this is a great soup for you have a gathering because it just takes, you know, takes a little time to do it. I mean, as you know, it's probably like 30, 40 minutes, but by doing it the night before half of it, much easier the day of. Mm, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I do. I do. I do like to, uh, when I entertain, I, I haven't really done much of it um, um, for the last couple of years. Of course, and then we went into lockdown when I was ready to face people again. Yes. We went into lockdown. <laughs> so, you know, which, you know, I kind of enjoy. I was talking to my son yesterday and I said, um, I said, he, uh, we, were, we were saying, oh, it looks like, you know, in the UK, it's all back to normal, you know, because mm -hmm. even if you test positive, Boris is going to say you can go out and that sort of stuff, you know. And yeah. um, because we've got to that stage where, where you're just going to get it like a bad cold or, you yeah. know, in some people's cases, no symptoms at all. But... What, what, we were, what we were saying essentially was to say, oh, I'm going to miss wearing a mask and I'm going to miss not having to kiss people when you're saying hi. Because, you know, I go to the shops and I don't bother with makeup. I just put a mask on. Concealer oh. around the eye, concealer around the eye. And I'm good. <laughs> well, see, we're very fortunate because over here in Arizona, we and uh, in quite a few states, we have not worn a mask in, in a long time. And as of today, matter of fact, all the mandates are completely left off. It's up to you if you wish to. You don't have to in, in businesses and banks and so on and so forth. So it's really kind of been nice. But I have to say, I, I, I've not wear makeup. It's obviously, you know, with the mask, everything goes off. But I do wear lipstick. And I have the lipstick who stays, who doesn't go away. And, people, and when I take it off to do things, it's just a large piece. How do you have a mis mascara, you know, your, your lipstick stay? I should have worked for the company that I was representing for my lipstick. Because I take the mask off and I'm like, oh, what the lipstick are you using? I'm like, well, you know, but I, I just couldn't. <laughs> but eye makeup is rose hard. And, and it is, it's, it's nice to be able to kind of go back and wear makeup and just have yeah. a little bit of a yeah. nice life again, you know. So Yeah, that's right. I think we were, we were, was it 2020? We had two weddings. 
And um, I must have bought full jumpsuits. Are they called jumpsuits? Yeah, that's right, jumpsuits full on for, for the wedding because yes. one of them was supposed to be in Singapore and one was up north here in the UK. And then, of course, both were cancelled. We did eventually go to the one in Sheffield, but uh-huh. from a, a, a springtime um, wedding, it became a summer wedding. So clothes completely different, you know. So I've got these four jumpsuits in my wardrobe still with the tags hanging out there right i'm going to use them for my videos i don't care yeah that would be good well you know (laughs) it's 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 funny because i have not really shopped i'm I'm not a shopper to start off with and you know but i i i have learned a couple of things i love to go to the store early in the morning so it was even better for me the store opens at six at six or one i was in shopping i haven't done much you know, clothes shopping at all. I mean, that for me has not. Um, I was having a harder time with the hairdresser not being open, but it, she got open, so that was okay. But um, no, now I'm like ready to go back to shopping. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I'm back to the house, so I need that. So where are you at on your... Right. So we've, we've, had, we've had the onions, carrots being sauteed, and then we added the bay leaves and the peppercorns and some tomato puree, tomato paste. And then we added the fish soup and that's been simmering. So now I'm going to increase the heat and add our fish. I'm only using two types of fish, which is smoked haddock Mm -hmm. and some salmon. That's all. You can have three. Usually I have a white, a non-smoked white fish in there as well. But um, my son did the shopping and I didn't want to stress him out too much with all the different things to buy. Because they're vegetarians, my kids, you know. And I I can just imagine him picking up the fish like that <laughs> okay I, are you familiar well obviously you are familiar with asterix and obelix the french comics book called asterix and obelix right yes i remember yes. when they pick up the fish is always like like this when you say that it reminded me of that like you know, the, the person with the fish so, like, it's, so it's I'll, just, joke. That, I'll just i'll so i've placed the, um added the fish and i'm just going to add some olives to it black and green olives I've got, okay. I've got kalamata and green olives. So that's sort of purple olives. And then I've got the capers, salted capers that were rinsed. Okay. So we're going to add that in there as well. So you can see that we've got seriously tangy flavors in there. Capers and the salted cucumbers. And now we're going to let this come to a simmer and you know, I can see the fish is practically already cooked. So we're, we're almost done here. Perfect. Then I am almost done here, actually. So what I'm going to do, I am going to bring out my blender. And I'm going to put everything in here. I'm going to actually take this off the heat a little bit. The wonderful thing with the cast iron, it continue cooking. So I need to always kind of remove it from it. All righty. Okay, so I am going to fill this in a second and then I'm going to smooth it all out and I will spare the details of the noise to all of you. So I will mute myself. Now, meanwhile, I am going to put this in here just like this. Now, the juice does not have that much soup left to it, of course, but we're going to be adding the cream and the milk. Now, I use whole milk, 100% you know, fat milk and cream, heavy cream. So, but you can use low fat milk, uh, um, non-fat, whichever it's you prefer. So those, you know, those are my choices. I do like real milk. We do things a little differently, don't we sometimes? Okay. So when you start zapping those things, I'll finish off here with, with everything else. Oh, good. Then let me put this in very quickly. I have one more. Let's see how much of a clot I can do today, shall we? Voila. I'm going to put that back there. I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put the lid on. And I am going to say mute GNG for a minute. Okay. All righty. So we've got almost everything in there. The soup is practically done. And um, let me see if I can just tilt it slightly for you to see without actually slip uh, spilling it. So we've got diced carrots, diced onions, um, diced salted cucumbers, olives, and two types of fish, smoked 
smoked haddock as well as salmon, and they've been cut to bite-sized pieces as well. So the fish is done. Fish doesn't take long to cook at all. So now we're going to finish this off with adding some white wine vinegar, more tartness, oops, a little bit of white wine vinegar. Vinegar is always a great way to finish off a dish. It just completes, completes a lot of recipes. And then we've got some lime juice. Yet more tartness to the recipe. So now we're just going to check the seasoning. It should need salt because of the salted cucumbers and the olives that went in there, but we're going to check that anyway. Back. Are you back? I'm back. I just finished smoothing it out. As you can see, it's all nice and smooth. So now I'm going to put it back in the pot that we had before, just scraping it all down. It smells delicious, if I may say so myself. All righty. All right, I'm just put this like this. And now we're going to add the milk. So I'm gonna turn it back on a little bit. The milk and the cream, just to warm it up, nothing more than that. And um, I left it at room temperature, so it was much easier. It will not take long to actually um, um, to warm up. So there, and stirring it all up and we're done. Oh, and then I have to add the cheese to it also. And as you can see, this is pretty easy as well. Just mm. doesn't take much to it. Let me put a little bit more milk in it. Now, it depends if you like it more creamy or less creamy, put more milk, less milk. I like it a little bit creamier, obviously. But, and now put the cheese in it. And I have Parmesan cheese. And I know it's a lot, but it's so good with it. Okay, and you're done with yours? I am. I've just got to finish it off. That's all. Perfect. Why don't you finish it up? Because I think okay. I've, uh, by as soon as you finish it up, I think mine is finished as well. So so uh, our smoked fish, Solianka, is finished. The, the, the fish is, is done cooking. I tasted, check the seasoning. It doesn't need any salt. But of course, you know, we're going to add some freshly ground black pepper. <laughs> Match or as little as you want. And then we're just going to stir that in. If you want it tangier, add a little bit more lime juice, lemon, lemon juice. So now lemon what juice. we're going to do is I've got a little tub of creme fraiche here. Now, traditionally, we will be putting a an Eastern European um, sour cream, sour type cream called smetana. Um, I think I can, I'm pretty sure I can get it here because we've got Polish, a Polish shop just literally within walking distance, but we've got, I've got creme fraiche. So what I'm going to do is stir a little bit of it in. Usually the soup is served with a dollop of, of spetana or creme fraiche on top, but okay. I like to stir a little bit in um, to, 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 to thicken, not quite thicken, but flavor the soup a little bit more. So I'm just going to add a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, literally sort of half a tablespoon of it, uh, of it. And I'm going to lighten it with a little bit of the soup that you saw me placing in this little bowl. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pour this back in there. Now, if you added the creme fresh straight in there, you're going to have bits, dollops of it, and you're going to be going to have to start end up stirring it and you don't want that because we've got flaky fish in there we've got skinless fish cubes in there which is just going to fall apart if you start yeah. shaking and stirring so we're just going to add that back in there and very very gently give that a stir Great. without breaking up our fish as much as is possible. And that's it. The soup is done. And then I'll show you how to serve it up in a minute.
Well, my soup is done as well. So I can just, it, it just needed to be reheated. The milk and the cream just needed to be warm up. Now, as you know, when you use heavy cream, you can't go too hot because it curdles. So you just have to make sure that it's a medium low and then you just move it forward. But it is all done. It's the only thing it needs to be, it needs to be served. And it's Ooh. nice and flavorful. I tasted it. It doesn't need pepper. You can add a little bit more pepper if you want to. Uh, and salt. It's perfect with salt. So shall I just uh, serve it? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Another. I, I didn't realize how many ladles, ladles I have. I think I have four sitting right there. It's kind of odd, isn't it? Oh, I love that. I've got one in that color, but without those two, um, your, your serving dish. Without those two handles on the side. Oh, I love this. I just, one of my favorites are the terracotta from Italy. And I just love to eat on those. They're just wonderful. Now this, it's just, just like that. And you take a little bit of the bacon that we had earlier twist on. You just put it that in the middle of it. Right. And I left a little bit of my fresh thyme. Just put that over it. Just like that, and my little soup is done, ready to be enjoyed. Okay, oh. so now I'm going to dish mine up. One more step if you want to. You can actually even take, I'm so sorry, some fresh, some fresh Parmesan cheese and kind of grate it over it too to make it even more cheesy. There you go. Yeah, because you can't, can't ever have too much cheese never have enough cheese and as a French you know darn well we can never have enough cheese right yep right then so that's that's my soup there and um, beautiful now I'm, I'm going to add a little bit more so it just comes up a little bit on the ball and it's more visible there we go yeah it's kind of hard to show it Okay, now, so we've got the soup. We're going to finish it off with a dollop of the creme fraiche Ooh. on the side or on the top even, like that. And then a little bit of a slice of lemon and very traditional. So sorry, Fergus. Um, some chopped, some chopped dill, very traditional. I go very, very light with dill because I'm really not a fan. It reminds me of that, um, of those, those um, colic medicines you give babies. And I oh. hate that. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> anyway, uh. anyway, 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 moving, moving swiftly on. Is, that looks is. beautiful, Aslan. Absolutely gorgeous. Here is our smoked fish. Solianka. And this is roasted cauliflower soup. Shall we have a, a taste? Absolutely. All righty. And then, of course, if you wanted to, with all that mm. topping you've done, if you wanted a little bit more pepper, mm. always a good mm. idea. Oh, yummy. Right. So we're going to have a little bit of that. Some fish. Absolutely yummy. It's very, very tangy. I and can um, imagine. Because, because I didn't add more salt in it, not as salty. And it's got peppercorns. You we were mm. fairly generous with the amount of peppercorns. So as you <clears throat> pardon me, have a have a spoonful of the soup. And occasionally you'll bite into a peppercorn and, and, and you add, you know, with the tanginess, <laughs> I've got a bit of pepper stuck in my throat, <laughs> with the tanginess, <clears throat> you, you bite into this fruity pepper. <clears throat> it's really wonderful. <laughs> so I'm so sorry, how do you like your pepper? Honestly. <laughs> Are you okay, dear? Been a second, okay. Hey, we're live, okay? I'm sorry. We do think the little it just happened. <laughs> Perhaps I ought to mute myself and have a good call. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. That's quite all right. There we are. Okay, so maybe go easy on the pepper. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> the pepper makes everything taste good. Okay. Absolutely. Pepper makes everything taste better. 
absolutely. So both recipe will be underneath this, uh, this video today, as well as, um, as well as I have a, a mental blank here. And yeah, both of our recipes, it's like everything will be underneath it. Kind, please like us, give us a comment, you know, thumbs up, a comment, share this video, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Aslan channel. I will put it underneath it too. And of course, if you have any questions, let us know. If you do make those soups, and we really do hope you, you make those soups, send us a little note and send us a picture too. Love to have it. Hazel is always ready for answering any questions. Her recipe is a little bit more complicated than mine. If you have any questions, we will love to answer you. Now we are going to be meeting next week. We have no idea what we're going to be making yet. So sorry, it will be the element of surprise, right, Aslan? Absolutely. Absolutely. Meanwhile, we want to thank you all for being here today. Thank you for watching and see you next time. See you again on my on my channel. Next week That's will right. be on my channel. So That's if you right. are if you are one of Gianji's subscribers, look for the link to my to my channel in the below below the video. Below and the subscribe video. so that you'll get a notification. Turn that notification bells on for both of us. So when we go live, when we have a fresh video, you'll know. Absolutely. So um, all of you have a fabulous, fabulous weekend. Thank you again for being here from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Aslan. It's always a pleasure working with you. Always. On this side of the pond. Talk to you guys later. Bye.